Hello, I'm Ryan Jake Lamborn, and this is Yistiv Bru. So, um, if you're getting in the art, there's like a lot of different skill sets involved. Not all of them, I mean, if you're making a game, you might not ever really need to teach your hands how to draw properly. If you're, you know, doing pixels, or you're doing simple vector shapes. But one thing that all types of artists need to know, pretty much the most important thing that you will have in your skill set as an artist is color. Because color, if you have bad colors for really good drawing, it can make it look terrible. Doesn't matter how good you were. Bad colors, it, it looks bad. It's ugly. Good colors can make stuff that are simple or even even bad look way better than it should. Having interesting color choices goes a long way towards making your stuff look good. So um, there are websites that can help you uh, figure out complementary colors, complementary, and there'll be a link to the websites in the YouTube box thing. But those websites will only help you figure out a few colors that look nice together. When you're making a game, often you have tons of colors and they all interact with each other, you know, characters in the world and stuff. And you need those colors to look good the whole way through. So it's really important that you make rules for your colors, how you use them, which ones you pick. You want to try and get colors that sort of fit together. It can be really hard if you have too many colors, so uh, it's important to not have so many colors. It's just basic, simple thing you can do to, to not mess up. And this is just, you know, basic color conservation that every artist will do to try and keep things looking nice. One thing I see people doing a lot, which is really kind of not good, is that they, um, they fall into their, like, kid selves. They're... They're, they're, the sky's gotta be blue, the sun's yellow, grass is green, tree brown and green with little red apples. Uh, that's, that's, don't get hung up on realism. That's a really big tip. Don't get hung up on realism. You gotta pick colors that look good together, even if it doesn't make total sense. In fact, if you do really weird colors for things, it, it'll look good. And those colors in your head, like, grass being green, they're not even totally correct. I, it's summer, the grass is brown. <laughs> um, not that you should be using brown, I hate brown. Brown's awful, why is everything brown? Brown's a disgusting color. So, you know, don't get hung up on realism. Uh, another tip, when you're getting shades, getting shades of colors, so you pick your primary color, and you want a shade of it. So simple way to do that is to take your darkest color and put it in a in a linear gradient with your primary color that you're using and just pick out somewhere in between that you like. Your darkest color though, for this to work, should not be black. It should be an off black with some sort of color in it. Because if you pick black, it, it goes straight to gray and all the shading colors look kind of bad shit. Awful. Terrible. I wouldn't use a, a strict black unless I'm going to use it a lot. If you're using it a lot, it looks really cool, it's dark between the primary colors and the black. But if you're just using the dark color to be an outline or to be part of the shading, then use an off black. It fits better with the world, especially if all the shading colors are going from primary to that off black. It gives the whole a world coherence. Uh, most people use off blacks in like the bluish purplish area they're kind of um, more realistic but you know what don't get hung up on realism don't do that and uh yeah that's all i can think of to help you out with color um except you know go check out graphic design go look at things i mean that's all graphic design is really just colors and simple shapes and fonts fancy fonts um so after color there's form um, but honestly, there's probably not that much I can tell you to help you with getting good at drawing things or, or, or making 3D models or anything other than you're going to need to practice. You're going to need to practice a lot. And there's plenty of resources out there. There's lots of tutorials out there for, um, specific stuff. But in the end, it's, it's really just practice, you know, learning the tools, practice, and then some more practice. 
if you're doing uh, pixels though, probably stay away from nostalgia. Pixel art nostalgia is kind of is kind of bullshit because those old games they weren't trying to be pixel art. You look at a Squaresoft game, they're just like a noise of pixels everywhere. Like those backgrounds kind of look like someone painted something and then scaled it down to pixels and then just sort of, uh, and maybe they did. It's entirely possible that was a thing that they did because it's very obvious in those games that either they were building it for blurry cathode ray tube monitors or they just loved spraying pixels everywhere. And, and even back on like the NES, a lot of these games were trying to not fit in with what was possible. Like um, the Kunio Kun games, like uh, River City Ransom, Super Dodgeball. All those characters were made up of like three or four sprites at a time, which is why you get that blinking problem when you play those games because the NES can only handle like eight sprite tiles in a row. They have to like blink so that one of the characters doesn't go completely invisible. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. They wanted to look like anime so much that they made the screen blink annoyingly. Thanks. Pixel art from games today that that aren't trying to be retro. I think they look really cool. You got people like Super Brothers and Mess Off. The, the concept, if you want to do pixel art today when you could be doing normal arts, um, is that you want to go as low res as possible and still be able to convey animations because you get too low res and it gets really hard for certain things to be animated. An interesting thing that I'm kind of a fan of is that you can pretty much always tell a modern low-res sort of aesthetic when um, the characters don't have faces. When you're going low-res, you gotta get rid of details and the face is just a little detail. We feel like it's important because humans like faces, I guess, but um, it's not a big feature, so it's usually the first thing to go. My boy Risk Rains over here ain't got no faces neither. Look at that, that's modern. That's some modern right there. Uh, <laughs> If you want to like draw on the computer, if you're going to do like normal drawing, I feel like you should definitely get a Wacom or like a, a drawing tablet. Basic suggestion would be to get one of a, you know, like a medium size. You don't want it so big that it's hard to get across and you don't want it so small that it's um, really small. <laughs> um, I think some, some drawing tablets kind of work like a mouse, which totally defeats the purpose. So yeah, make make sure it, it doesn't have like mouse type relative movement. That's that's stupid. There's some with like fancy screens and stuff, but I uh, I, I don't like that at all. I don't like drawing on paper really. My hand in the way. I like being able to see the screen. The cursor shows me where I'm at, and I have my hands, my big yaoi hands, out of the way. Uh, <laughs> so if you're you're gonna be getting into owling, that's pretty much how you draw stuff. Draw two circles, draw the rest of the owl. It, it seems silly, but that's how that's how it works. You gotta rough out the form of the thing you're making, and then you can put in the details on a second pass. I would definitely recommend not using circles though. Things with like lines and corners are a bit easier to sort of translate into other stuffs. So like if you're gonna be drawing a, a character repeatedly from like different angles for animations and stuff. You want to be able to see where the body parts are going by drawing it with corners, squares, triangles. Kind of kind of draw it like you're you're making a 3D model and and that way it'll be easier to rotate in your in your head. And then you just plop in the details, turn your your cube owl into an actual owl and then you you good. That, that's pretty much how it works. That's it. If you're doing 3D, I, I don't have much to help you with because I don't actually do 3D. But uh, I hear Google SketchUp is good. Um, I hear Blender is bad. I don't know. That's just what I've heard. I think minimalist 3D stuff looks really cool and looks pretty simple compared to, you know, other stuff. Simple shapes with um, simple solid blocks of color for the textures and some sort of fancy lighting. I think lighting is pretty much everything when it comes to 3D from what I've seen at least. I mean lighting is the difference between an amateur movie and a, a big budget movie basically. Um, you should probably like learn some of those cinema techniques and then try to apply that to 3D. Seems like a good idea to me. If you're like 
uh, trying to make a modern military shooter with grass and trees and it's gonna be really hard I think and and not very good looking so you know don't get hung up on realism just make something that looks cool work with what you got I think the last bit of art advice I'm gonna say is for the people who are just like, screw it, I don't wanna do any of that. I just want this to look good. Uh, graphic design, go look at how to graphic design stuffs. Minimalism, go full minimalism. Um, another thing you could do is public domain art. There's a link in the YouTube box for this. A guy put up a really cool thing about how to find public domain art that you can use in your game. He's making a this cool thing that I'm showing you. I think it looks pretty cool and, and he didn't have to draw nothing so um that could work out for you so that's it my one ma's next time we'll be talking about animation see you then uh.